Hello, hello, and welcome, or welcome back to the Live Label Free Podcast. If you listened to my episode with my friend Mike a few episodes ago, which is called An Autistic Male's Eating Disorder Recovery Story, you know I said I would no longer be doing (laughs) solo episodes. But it's always funny how the moment we take the pressure off something, we suddenly want to do it again? The mind is complex. Anyways, This episode, as well as future episodes of this nature, is not going to be a solo episode in the same way that I used to do them. As I explained in that episode with Mike, scripting solo episodes really drains me because I'm basically writing from my heart, but then at the same time having to think about how I would say it in a conversational way, so it honestly just reminds me too much of masking, if that makes sense. I want to do what feels most authentic to me, and what I love doing most is writing. I mean, it's no wonder I'm almost finished writing my fourth book. All that being said, there are often topics that come up in my mind that I really want to write about, and recently I've just been posting those things on the blog at livelabelfree.com, and originally I was just going to leave it at that, have conversations on the podcast, and have my writings on the blog. But you know that feeling when you're like, hmm, there's an inkling here. I want more. It just doesn't feel quite right. And that gut instinct of mine was nudging me to find a way to share my written words on the podcast without putting myself back into that position of scripting an entire episode in the same way I used to script conversations when I knew I had to talk to people I really didn't want to talk to. But I obviously want to talk to you, my dear listener. So, I let the idea simmer in my mind and trusted that the solution would somehow come to me, as many of my ideas often do when I give them a rest. And sure enough, the idea came to me this past week. If you follow me on Instagram at LiveLabelFree, you know I've been recording the audiobook for Rainbow Girl, which is my memoir all about growing up undiagnosed autistic, how this led to the development of an eating disorder, and all the steps I took to recover and become label-free. You can learn more about the book at LiveLabelFree.com forward slash Rainbow Girl. But anyways, the recording of the audiobook is literally just reading what I've written. It's pure, unscripted, and just knowing that I'm making my story available in audio format is so exciting to me because I know we do have preferences for how we consume content and many people do prefer to listen versus to read. So, I'm guessing you know where this is going and that was me having the thought, Why can't I take the same approach of turning my blogs into a podcast as I do my print book into an audiobook? Well, the sky and beyond is the limit, my friends, so I decided nothing was holding me back. So, to conclude this little, which has now become a long intro, (laughs) I will be doing more solo episodes again, and there'll be snippets of my writing, or in other words, audio versions of my blogs. I'm honestly very, very, very excited about this because I share so much value on the blog and now it'll also be consumable via your ears. So without further ado, let's get into the first episode of the Live Label Free blog series, which is all about autistic types of binge eating. Welcome to Live Label Free, the podcast, where you'll learn to let go of limiting labels and embrace your unique brain. As my mom says so beautifully in her song, Fear is a heavy load to carry. Which is why on this podcast, you'll learn the scientific links between neurodiversity and eating disorders, giving you a deeper understanding of how you can face your fears and become truly free. Together, you and me, we will keep putting one foot in front of the other.
Autism and disordered eating often go hand in hand. From my personal experience, as well as working with hundreds of autistic individuals and their parents, I have become all too aware of the fact that food-related manifestations of autistic traits know no restrictions. In this post, or if you're listening to the podcast episode, I will be explaining the relationship between autism and binge eating. More specifically, you'll learn to distinguish between nine different types of binging as a result of autistic traits. So, number one, the sensory binge. Eating is one of the most all-encompassing sensory experiences in that it provokes practically every sense. So, not just the five well-known senses, including sight, taste, touch, smell, and hearing, you know, food, ASMR, and all that, but it also triggers internal feelings relating to interoception, and I actually did do an episode a while back on interoception. It's actually one of the first episodes of the podcast, so if you scroll all the way back to start oldest episodes, I believe it's the third episode. It's called Interoception in Autism and Anorexia. So, moving on to binge type number two is the hyperactive binge. So, when it comes to triggering our internal senses, food has a major impact on our nervous system. When we are feeling hyperactive, jumpy, and in that state of fight or flight mode, food can be soothing and help bring us back into a calm state. Especially if you have a history of restriction, eating may help your nervous system perceive safety because ultimately restriction is trauma to the body and trauma is stored in our nervous system so by eating you're actually proving to your nervous system like you're safe that that trauma is not is not at present um is not present anymore so uh number three is the black and white binge so autistic people often have polarized ways of thinking so think of going either all in or not at all This can apply to all areas of life, including school, work, friendships, projects, etc, etc. But also when it comes to food. We can get so caught up in either being super quote-unquote healthy and then dieting or taking on the fuck it attitude and then binging because you believe you've already quote-unquote screwed up so you might as well keep going. Number four is the make sense binge. So this is honestly one of my favorites because... I just remember all throughout my eating disorder and still when I try to describe things that just make sense in my head, like that's the only way I'm able to describe it, I just say, it just needs to make sense. (laughs) Um, So like I just mentioned, a huge part of my own eating disorder was this mental idea of food needing to quote unquote make sense. And I know that sounds vague when spoken about objectively because something making sense is of course a very subjective experience and this subjective experience of things needing to make sense is actually a very common autistic trait and in binging this can present as the food needing to have a certain look after eating it so think about cake being perfectly cut or peanut butter being perfectly smoothed out and needing to eat the entire row or column of chocolate and I actually talk about the food needing to be smoothed out in one of my episodes called three ed behaviors that are actually autistic traits um so i have two versions two yeah two episodes in that series um so if you just look up three ed behaviors that are actually autistic traits um you can learn more about that trait in those episodes um but coming back to this episode the drive for the food being left quote-unquote perfectly can cause you to eat until it's all gone or at least eat more than you initially wanted and this actually happened to me today i baked brownies last night and i kept i cut them into like eight servings and the the cuts weren't how do i say it like the cut wasn't like perfect so there was like crumbs I'm, this is going to sound so weird, but, like, the crumbs were kind of, like, falling off the edges of the brownie. I mean, as brownies do, because a brownie is not a perfect piece of solid fudge. Um, and that was, like, really bothering me. Um, so I kept eating the the crumbs that kept, like, falling off the brownies. But then I was like, oh, I might as well just eat the whole brownie. And I did that for every brownie. And before I know it, I have eaten all of the brownies. And... Yeah, I mean that, (laughs) I just show that because it just goes to show that, you know, I still have autistic traits that my mind tells me I need to do something and my body doesn't necessarily want that, but 
it's like all the energy in that moment is going to this needs to look perfectly um I mean, I have it with peanut butter and yogurt, and today I have it, had it with Biscoff. <laughs> like, I kept taking the spoon and going into the Biscoff jar, um, trying to, like, make it look perfectly smooth, um, but I couldn't get it to, so before I know it, the entire Biscoff jar is just gone <laughs> um, into thin air, um, obviously into my body, and I didn't feel so well after. Um, so, honestly, that's still, t- blah, that's still something I'm trying to navigate, um, but as I write in my author bio in rainbow girl and honestly the author bio of all my books (laughs) i literally say livia is a lifelong learner um because i am you know we're constantly evolving we're constantly learning we're constantly navigating trying finding new tools um and we do that through experiencing and experiencing obstacles and learning what our body is telling us so anyways kind of side tangent there coming back to this episode um number binge number five binge type number five is the analysis paralysis binge. So when I feel anxious and I have a lot of different foods in the house, I sometimes have a really hard time deciding what to make or what to eat. And then thinking about all my options can cause me to become quote unquote paralyzed. And because I then can't pick one option, I will just eat everything. So this happens a lot with me when it comes to like nut butters and stuff. So if I have peanut butter and almond butter and cashew butter and like biscoff spread and nutella and like all these different types of spreads in the house and i can't pick one i'll just be like okay i'll just have a spoonful of each but then that other trait comes in of it needing to be make sense and me needing to be smoothed out and i end up just eating so much nut butter spreads um because i I couldn't initially choose um so again it's still something i'm trying to navigate for myself um, but yeah, I mean, I trust that <laughs> my body and the world is, is going to work out for me. So number six is the procrastination bins. Um, so I mean, it goes without saying food can be an escape when we have a lot on our plates and no pun intended, <laughs> um, because this can, this is of course not literally, um, but when we do, you know, feel very overwhelmed in life and we do have a lot of tasks that need to be done. The sensory experience of binging can temporarily numb us from the stress of those tasks or responsibilities. So, number seven is kind of related to um, number one, and that is the interoceptive binge. Interoception is the sense through which we monitor the inner state of our body. So, your interoceptive awareness helps you to understand your internal cues. So, think whether you're hungry, thirsty, tired, energetic, too hot, too cold, anything that, you know, your body tells you, like, we need to change um that's all regulated by interoception so autistic people actually tend to lack interoceptive awareness meaning we may be unable to recognize feelings of hunger and fullness in the same way neurotypicals do so for this reason we may go very long without eating which then leads to binging but then difficulty sensing fullness can contribute to eating excessive amounts of food during that binging itself So number eight is the hormonal binge. And this is actually a topic that I do want to do a totally separate episode on. Um, And that is the topic of PMDD, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Um, And it's considered a very severe form of PMS um, and is incredibly common among autistic people. And it seems to be the result of an extreme sensitivity to hormonal changes throughout the month. So, during my quote-unquote PMDD week, um, and yeah, I I definitely do want to do a total deep dive into PMDD, what it is, how I experience it, how other people experience it, um, so if you are listening to this and you have PMDD, um, and would want to come on the podcast and share your experience, um, feel free to reach out to me either on Instagram or send me a message via the contact form on my website at livelabelfree.com forward slash contact um because i'm always looking for new guests for the podcast um because i believe that sharing stories and connecting with others and sharing like lived experience is the most powerful way of educating each other um so yeah during my like i said during my pmdd week I get very depressed and all I want to do is binge. Like, all I want to do is eat. There is nothing else that gives me the same dopamine hit, the same satisfaction as just 
eating really delicious sugary high carb high fat fried food um so but even if you you are someone who doesn't get periods um you may also struggle with binge urges due to hormonal fluctuations um because we all have hormones and hormones obviously play a huge role in our regulation of appetite and hunger and fullness and mood and how we feel um so yeah food is obviously going to play a part in that because food is also something that we all need to do need need to do food is something we all need every day so the last type of binge number nine i actually believe this isn't necessarily a type of binge because i consider extreme hunger to be separate um but for the sake of semantics i have titled number nine the extreme hunger binge so when you have restricted yourself of food for a prolonged period of time and there are several ways beyond simply eating too little calories um that you know can be considered restriction your body builds up an energy deficit and the longer you restrict the more food you will eventually need to eat to bring your body back to a place of energy balance so when you experience extreme hunger you will eat very large quantities of high calorie food and it will resemble binge eating um because your body needs to repair all the damage done due to restriction and i'm actually kind of going off script here off of the blog post words <laughs> um to say that you know if you are struggling with extreme hunger you have restricted for a very long time um or you're caught you know in that binge restrict cycle chances are you are going through extreme hunger um and this is exactly why i created my course extremely hungry to completely satisfied that really guides you step by step to understanding everything that went wrong kind of quote unquote wrong when you started dieting or when you started restricting how to you know recognize hunger and fullness how to recognize you know whether you are emotional eating or whether you're actually hungry right um because there's this huge misconception that mental hunger is emotional eating or that you know if you honor your extreme hunger you're going to swing to the other side after you know anorexia or another restrictive eating disorder and you're going to develop binge eating disorder and there's this fear that you're never going to be able to stop eating there's the fear that you know you're gonna become addicted to food addicted to sugar um and you're just gonna gain weight forever i mean that was one of my biggest fears that was one of the reasons i procrastinated recovery for such a long time was the fear you know that once i started eating i would let myself go and i would never have the discipline that i had during my restrictive eating disorder well um i don't think i have to tell you that is not true that never happened <laughs> um and i'm now fully recovered from my eating disorder and have peace with food um and my extreme hunger course um extremely hungry to completely satisfied really i share my experience i share all the science i have been able to find on why this happens and how to get you over extreme hunger help you to overcome it help you beat it and you know finally have peace of mind again finally regulate your appetite um it is all in that course so you can learn more about my extreme hunger course at livelabelfree.com forward slash course and if you have any other struggles you know you maybe want to work with me based on everything i just said or you've listened to other podcasts podcasts of mine or follow me on instagram and you're like you know you just get it livia i really want to talk to someone who can help me finally make peace with food um and i don't want to enroll in a course i just like want a 100 percent individualized um you know coaching you can learn more about coaching with me at livelabelfree.com for its off schedule and you can schedule a call for coaching with me there and the first call is as low as one dollar so you can really um yeah so you can really just like see what it's like to work with me and to meet me um and we can see how we can work together to help you overcome binging help you overcome any type of you know fear of fear of anything fear of life right that's the deepest deepest thing ever um, anyways but you know what i'm saying um if you want to finally like get out of this binge restrict cycle stop constantly thinking about food and finally just live a life in which you can 
do things that you actually enjoy and you're not plagued by fear all the damn time, um, I really hope that you schedule a consultation call for coaching with me. So I hope to chat with you in real time and otherwise I'll chat with you in the next episode. Bye-bye for now, my friend. Just one foot in front of the other And you'll see around the corner soon This podcast has been recorded by your host, Liv. This podcast has been edited by my small but mighty Live Label Free team. And the beautiful song, One Foot in Front of the Other, that you are now listening to was written and recorded by my beautiful mom, Louise Alexandra. I am so grateful for my team and everyone who supports Live Label Free. Together, we are always stronger.